inviting uh, advisor Daiwo. I just want to ask the technician to, if you can please, it, I'm, I'm not sure if you have it. Yes, thank you. If you can please put the presentation up on the screen. Thank you very much. So on that, we welcome Ross Daiwo. Thank you. Good morning. Um, so, as the National Chief said, uh, I was asked to do um, a discussion paper, so I did one on sovereignty, self-determination, and land back, a path forward for implementing our treaty and inherent rights, and um, I'll just get into it. Um, on June 20, 21st, 2021, the federal bill C-15 became law, but current issues remain unchanged. Uh, in other words, Bill C-15, the UN Declaration Act, maintains the colonial status quo. Section 2.2 of uh, Bill C-15, uh, defining the rights of Indigenous peoples, is based on Section 35 Common Law, which relies on the colonial doctrine of discovery, otherwise referred to by the federal government as assumed crown sovereignty. Uh, the federal position on assumed crown sovereignty over First Nations is uh, set out in its inherent right to self-government policy, uh, which since 1995 has been the overarching umbrella policy for all discussions, negotiations, and uh, legislation with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's 2018 uh, commitment to replace the 1995 policy on the inherent right to self-government uh, with new and better approaches. Um, despite that, the inherent right policy remains in place. And through resolution 595, the chiefs and assembly rejected the inherent right policy and called for a First Nations position to be developed and adopted. And further to resolution 595, in resolution 25, 2019, chiefs and assembly rejected the inherent right and the comprehensive land claims policies and directed AFN to develop a First Nations-led alternative process, uh, which is why this discussion paper was prepared and distributed to the Chiefs. <clears throat> so that really uh, speaks to the need to strengthen our authentic nation-to-nation -nation relationship, which is based on the doctrine of discovery. Right from the point of contact with Europeans, um, there was military and trade alliances entered into, which were uh, symbolized by wampum belt agreements, and those evolved into the early peace and friendship treaties, and into the Treaty of Niagara, um, the alliance uh, to fight the Americans in the War of 1812, and the subsequent treaties that have been entered into. That's the real nation-to-nation -nation relationship. And we also need to build a contemporary context for our founding documents, uh, in um, 1980, there was a Declaration of First Nations um, by the National Indian Brotherhood. And also in 1981, there was a Statement of Principles on Treaty and Aboriginal Rights. Both documents were adopted before the Constitution Act 1982 uh, became law. But those are the founding documents uh, that led to the Assembly of First Nations. Uh, we need to align land back with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Standards because um, Articles 26, 27, 28 of the United Nations uh, Declaration uh, deals restora with restoration of lands that have been taken without free prior informed consent or if there's not going to be rest restoration, there needs to be restitution. Uh, lands of equal quantity and quality given or monetary compensation. And also federal, provincial, and uh, territorial governments continue to define our inherent treaty rights without First Nations at the table. It's critical that First Nations assert themselves and develop a clear path to get the federal, provincial, and territorial governments to accommodate inherent treaty rights as we understand them, uh, instead of through unilateral uh, policy declarations, um, through a jointly developed policy and legislative framework. So, consequently, we're recommending that uh, the Assembly of First Nations and the Government of Canada advance truth and reconciliation by implementing, recognizing, and respecting our inherent treaty rights, including land back, um, that any process involving First Nations lands, territories, and resources now needs to be aligned 
as I said with the UN Articles 26, 27, and 28, regarding restoration of lands or restitution of lands or, and, or monetary compensation. Also provided for in um, the UN Declaration Article uh, 28 is that any proposed process regarding indigenous lands, territories, and resources must be aligned with the international standard of free prior informed consent of indigenous peoples and must be a basis for restoration of and restitution for indigenous lands, territories, and resources which have been confiscated, taken, occupied, used, or damaged without their free prior informed consent. So we're proposing three key objectives uh, to a six-point strategy. The first objective is to get the federal, provincial, and territorial governments to recognize and respect First Nations Aboriginal title, inherent rights, all treaties, and a right of self-determination in accordance with international law. And the second objective is the creation of a new policy and legislative framework with the federal, provincial, and territorial governments for discussion at a First Minister's meeting. Uh, which recognizes and affirms um, First Nations Aboriginal title, inherent rights, all of the treaties, and the international right of self-determination. And the third objective is to support First Nations peoples in the exercise of the rights flowing from their Aboriginal title, inherent rights, and all treaty rights um, to obtain benefits from restoration of or restitution for their lands, territories, and resources. Again, that First Nations have traditionally owned, occupied, or otherwise used or acquired, which have been confiscated, taken, occupied, used, damaged without their free prior informed consent. So the elements of the six-point strategy we're proposing is the first is public education to raise awareness about inherent treaty rights amongst the public, the media, and First Nations. Uh, the second element is uh, political uh, negotiation or pre-litigation strategy uh, to replace harmful policies like the inherent right policy and process that diminish or um, negatively affect or impact inherent treaty rights as well as scoping out potential legal strategies. Which leads to the third element of litigation uh, to develop short-term and long-term legal strategies to ensure inherent treaty rights are fairly and justly interpreted um, based on the nation-to-nation -nation relationship. And uh, element number four is pretty important, uh, policy and legislative framework development uh, to uh, replace the existing colonial domestic policy and legislative framework with one that recognizes and respects First Nations inherent treaty rights based on the international right of self-determination. Um, we, we know which policies we don't like. We've been articulating those for years. Um, what we've yet to do is to come up with uh, some common principles of what it is that we do want. So this policy uh, work would be important. Element five is uh, direct action or assertion or exercise of rights to support rights holders in the exercise of their inherent treaty rights on their territories. And uh, the final uh, element would be an international campaign networking with and securing international support from other indigenous peoples and human rights bodies from around the globe um, for the implementation of our inherent treaty rights. And our next step uh, that we propose is a resolution to create a Chiefs Committee on Nation Building at the July uh, Annual General Assembly to bring forward um, you know, a six-point strategy to detail that um, to fulfill the three objectives that we laid out here. Okay, so, she's not so with that, uh, okay, uh, Melanie and Laura will, will complete the uh, presentation. Thank you. Good morning, Marshall. Uh, as National Chief said, I am just going to give you an update on our work that we're doing in terms of discussing the Healing Path Forward Accord. Um, so my presentation here is in English, uh, however for uh, everyone in the room that is French, I will uh, do the presentation in French. Donc, euh, je présenterai euh, un résumé des sessions d'engagement par rapport à l'ébauche de la Corse de chemin de la Télévision 
Donc, nous avons organisé euh, et complété neuf sessions à date d'engagement entre le 15 et 22 mars. Bien que la participation euh, et l'inscription aient été minimes, nous avons entendu quand même et noté la rétroaction suivante. Euh, donc, premièrement, les commentaires concernant les trois composantes sont favorables. Euh, L'accord proposé prévoit des mesures beaucoup plus efficaces et pertinentes afin d'avancer la réconciliation, reconnaître la diversité régionale, assurer l'égalité et l'équité, ainsi que soutenir et respecter les droits inhérents et les droits issus des traités des Premières Nations. L'accord proposé représente une voie positive vers le renouvellement de la relation et de la création d'un espace pour travailler avec le gouvernement sur les priorités communes, les décisions et les développements politiques, ainsi que d'autres processus importants. Les composants proposés euh, devraient être placés dans un nouvel ordre de priorité, priorité compte tenu euh, de la version préliminaire du plan d'action du gouvernement de la LDNU. Les Premières Nations ont besoin d'un financement adéquat et de temps.